How's it going? Good. Thanks, How are you doing? Thanks for your talk. It, I've never like felt like I've grown so much in one session. Just, mm. just, just, I don't know what they call it, but you uh, fixed so many problems today. Um, let's see. My questions are, how do you motivate yourself to be by yourself for so long until you can um, mm. love on others? Yeah. Um, just how do you block that time out? To, how do you fill your cup? Yeah. So, your cup thing, yeah. Is it three years by yourself? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a specific time frame first, which should be a good thing for all you guys to know. There's not a bubble of time. Here's what I look at. Uh, love is, is an interesting thing. It's an emotion. Emotions happen in the back end of actions. And I find that when we're going into the world, like I want this thing, like what we really have to do is give the actions to love ourselves. So when you want to go find the place to get to the internal positive, what I've found is it's going to, how, how deep and how consistent can you give the actions to where when you look back at the person in the mirror, like you love them. And this is what I found it looks like doing hard things. Like I, there's something specific and, and beautiful about fitness as this connection to people and self-love. If you want to look at the world, I would probably venture to say a vast high percentage of people that find themselves in a place of, I love my humanity. I love who I am. It's the individual that started training and started working out and not for like a six pack abs or go on a stage, but just because they know that in the middle of that workout, they didn't want to do the extra two sets, but they did them. Right. I didn't want to, uh, to, to go to that extra mile, but I did. I, I wanted to quit at 30 seconds, but I, I, I got to I got to a minute. Right. And it sounds arbitrary. It sounds very simple. But when you get done and you look in that mirror, like, I don't care if you might have lost no weight. You like that person more because that person like you, you invested as an action into them and you get this response and feeling of love. Think of it like this. I have kids. A lot of us have kids. When my kid comes out, all they do is poop and cry and eat. They make my life a living hell. It's horrible. My best friend hasn't slept in a year because he has a new baby. And I'm like, how do you have this love for it? Well, because he's giving the actions of love. And if you give the actions of love, you receive the emotion, even if the other entity isn't actually giving it just yet. It's this natural weird thing that takes place. So the fact that I'm changing diapers and I'm up at six in the morning, I have this like you can feel it. It anchors into your heart of like a love. And so as much as I'm talking about as arbitrary, like child, it's the same for you. You got to do hard things that are past the normal point for yourself because then you start loving yourself, respecting yourself, and you start showing up for yourself. Now, how long that takes, it's different for everybody. And also, if you get to the point of, of only focusing on your negatives, it does take a lot longer. So don't look at all the stuff you haven't done because that's going to always be stuff you haven't done. Start anchoring the things you have done. Dove did a great study years ago and had two people come into a room and they would describe themselves. And then one person describes that same person. The person who described themselves always saw an ugly picture. The person describing the other person always saw a beautiful picture. Why? Because we're really good at seeing what we're bad at. So if you get to the point of like doing the actions and love yourself, but also like gratitude's huge. I love you for this talking to yourself. I love you for this. Put the energy out there, focus it there and the energy flows there. You find you get to that, that positive bubble. I don't know the time frame. Mimi, I wish I knew I could give you like, Hey, go do it for 37 seconds. Every Wednesday doesn't work, but it's going to be a journey for you. But you'll yeah, find I it. work on projecting good thoughts on others. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. I'm talking about you. Project good thoughts on onto you. Like this isn't this isn't because you can't pour from an empty cup. If you don't have this in you, it's hard to give to other people. That's how I felt when I, my marriage was tanking. I couldn't give to my clients because I had no joy in me. But the moment that you can start giving to you unashamed, like I cut cut people out of the world just because if someone gets mad at you for working on you, they don't deserve you. Let me repeat that. If someone gets mad at you for working on you, they do not deserve you. So I feel gotta, like I'm the, the female Jim Carrey. I'm just, I've got so many different personalities and that's what I oh, you're human. <laughs> yeah, you're human. But good question. But spend time on you. You'll find you'll find yourself when you love yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How are you? Hi, hey. very good. Hey, Anthony. My name is hey. Jisa. Hi. Hi Jisa. So thank you so much. It was amazing. So I started doing Mayweather's boxing. They opened up oh, nice. here since March. So I've been doing March, April may and Good. i love it so i just wanted to uh, know how can i optimize it so i can burn the same amount of calories at half time yeah yeah, yeah. so weights with what you're doing already because you guys are doing like my son does boxing stuff it's fast paced but it's not a, not a, a lot of resistance outside of essentially the the you know the punching of the bags or body weight mm -hmm. and so what you can do is you can add weights that'll help you like 
core is going to be big. Um, squats going to be big to stay in your, your, your kind of like your toes. Shoulders are going to be good areas to train. And the idea is if you lift weights, it'll actually help you build the lean muscle mass, which will help you burn fat at rest, right? But it also is going to force you to do things that are hard workouts that still burn calories. And then the recovery will make you stronger so you can do more in your boxing workouts and in the weights later on. Now, most people go, I don't want to get bulky like a man. Let's just put it this way. There are men who've been lifting weights for 20 years who aren't bulky. And, and, that, and they have testosterone. Ladies, you guys don't have testosterone. So the ability for you to get bulky, like you'd have to put something else in your body that wouldn't be passed by the Olympic committee, we'll call it. <laughs> and you don't want to do that anyways. So lifting of weights is great. It's also good for bone density and actual like stability of core and body. So when like you slip and fall, you don't get hurt because you have strength, right? But it also helps with bone density. So as we get older, we're not gonna worry about slipping and falling and breaking a hip, which can be very detrimental to our health. So mm -hmm. those are great reasons to lift weights. And all I would say for you is like, don't go in there and try to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. You can do what's called compound movements, which are great. Like, you know, if you see the ladies on Instagram, they'll do a lunge with a kettlebell, do a lunge, step up, deadlift, press up in the air. Like there's a compound multi-joint movements. Those are great. It's called functional strength. TRX is a great tool to get because it allows you to do some full, you know, full kinetic chain, they call it, hand to feet movement. But stuff like that is great, a great ways to use your muscles to get a higher, like higher calorie burn and a lower amount of time that still aids what you're currently doing in boxing. Mm -hmm. So do you suggest to do it before or after the 45-minute um, workout? Yeah, that's going to be one of those questions that is really dependent upon how you feel. Says so everybody's different. Okay. And here's the truth. Your body, everybody, your body will adapt whatever you force it to do. So there were times like when I hated eating before practice when I was in the NFL. So some teams that have like meals like hours before with the Steelers, they forced us to eat the hour before practice because they wanted us to be able to play on a full stomach. Logically, you're like, that would make sense. After a while, we got used to it. The body will adapt what you force it to do. So okay. I would say, but no matter what, it's going to suck because either you're, the second workout will suck to do regardless, but it won't suck forever. So if you lift weights first, go box the first couple of weeks, it's going to be hard after a while. It's normalcy now, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you box first, lift afterwards, the first couple of weeks is going to be hard, but after a while, body adapts to it. If you can mm -hmm. give yourself the right nutrients and then stay in that, that pocket for a couple of weeks, you'll catch mm -hmm. up. You'll be just fine. And just a follow-up question, because the eating, some people say to eat right after, and some people said don't eat right after. So Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff around that. Yeah. To, to be quite honest, there's you can do what's called perinutrition, eating during. I mean, there's a lot out there, right? Here's what I will say. The body, if you've done like weight training sessions, about that 40 to, you know, 30 to 45 minute window afterwards, the body's needing to recover pretty quick. You'll feel fatigued, you'll feel drained. It's good to get like nutrients in. Water's big, vitamins, fruit's good. But you do want to get some protein in because what happens, our body can start to uh, like cannibalize. It'll start to eat itself. And mm. it won't happen like that. But the idea is like you want to have something in when the body's like, hey, I need nutrients to recover right now because if i get a cut blood goes to that area right now and a scab starts building the body's healing right now right so same thing the muscles are micro tears so i put stuff into the body it can start to recover right now got it thank yeah. you my man john how are you Thank you so much for another fantastic session. Since the day that I met you in Influencer 2019 in San Diego, you've been encouraging me and inspiring me to make shift happen. Um, I'm in a fortunate position where shift has happened. I'm living my life's work. I'm doing my life's work. I do still have goals on the cards to create the online course, to write the book, and, and also be a great father. So I'm serving these amazing clients around the world. I want to be a great dad. Um, and I've got these, you know, uh, not conflicting priorities, but just loads of priorities. So yeah. um, share a little bit on priorities, on juggling, on serving as the highest and best uh, version of yourself in all of these different areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just so you guys know, I have three kids. I have a 16 year old just got his driver's license, which is a very weird dynamic. I got 11 year old twins. Uh, I have a wife that has multiple businesses that I am like the handyman for. I'm a very, I built this whole studio. Like I'm a super weird, I'll fix your car. I'll build a website. I'll seriously, it's weird. I cannot. I'm not even joking. I can input a, and install a brand new car stereo in your car right now. It's just weird. The things I can do. But I say that because on top of all those, I have a business where I'm writing a book. We have an app coming out. I'm here coaching with you guys. I just got back from T-Mobile last week, streaming the, I think 80,000 employees they have. I'm doing a lot. However, I got a really great rhythm for it all. I'm very present with my wife. I'm very present with my kids. I have the business running and here's what I do. I realize that uh, I have, we all have these big eyes. Like think about eating food. It's a big pot of food. What we do is we take all the stuff out of the pot and we put it on our plate. And we say, I got to eat everything on the plate right now. And the truth is you don't have to eat everything on the plate right now. There are certain things that need to go back in the pot, right? So 
what I look at, as I said, a big overall picture, and those of you guys who may know some of my story, I got to a point where my wife and I got divorced. Um, I had a lot of focus on the professional world and I was doing that thing and I wasn't present as a father. Everything fell apart. I got divorced and I had custody bouts. We got all that. And then we're now remarried after three years of divorce. We're four years deep in an amazing marriage. And the reason it works is because I understand all the things you're talking about. And the way that I do it is I have a very specific process. One, you guys got to get a planner. If you don't have Brendan's planner, get a high performance planner. I think I have like three because every time I see him, he gives me like five more. I, think I, can't, I can't give them away fast enough. Um, but get a planner. Here's the big thing. Don't just get the planner. Learn to plan. Like learn how to plan. And here's what I always tell people. It's a simple process. Figure out what are the core projects, John. And then as I look at them, I do what's called a project deconstruction process. I open up the project and say, how many hours is this going to take? And I, I first do this. I want to take a look if I'm launching a podcast. Okay, how long is it going to take to write the intro, to record the intro, write the outro, record the outro, find the music, make the, uh, you know, the, the image. Um, how am I going to launch this thing? What platform is it going to go on? How, many, how long is the episode going to take? How long will it take to edit the episodes? I take all these little pieces and go, okay, great. If I want to launch that, it's going to look like, now nah, let's call it a 15-hour project, right? 15 hours. Now, I'm not going to do it in one fell day. I'm not going to do it all in one day. But I take 15 hours, I put it to the side. Okay, great. I want to write a book. Okay, how's, how am I going to write this book? Okay, I want to spend some time thinking about the concepts I want to include, the stories I want to include, how they're going to connect. Okay, then I'm going to set aside time to write, right? That may be a 60-hour project. I just wrote my book, and it, it really was, I think, 65 hours of all of it together. I put, I put it dialed in, and so I was like, 65 hours? I had it set for 70. I got it done a little bit early. And then on top of that, I'm like, all right, I want to, I want to make this app. All these little pieces, I, I take them and pull them apart and I look at the hours. Now, John, I go, why am I working in the first place? We're working to be able to spend time with our family, to have freedom, all this stuff. So what I do is I go back to my planner. I quite literally enter into my planner. Okay, great. Here's what I'm going to be morning with, my, with the kids. I'm going to take them to school. In my, in my planner, it says, take kids to school like for a half hour. Then it has like breakfast with my wife and I may have dinner at three o'clock sometimes for, I cut it off. I am not working. I'm out of the studio. I'm done because I know it's important. Now what I do is based on all the areas of the big rocks, my workouts, my time with family, which really, if you think about it, isn't a ton. Take the kids to school, spend an hour or two with my wife, right? Get a workout 45 minutes in a, a regular day. I still got five to six hours, right? So now what I do is I go back in, I highlight the areas across four weeks. I do four weeks at a time. And when I eat a week, I lead a week. And every weekend I do another week. So it's always four weeks out. And what I do is I say, okay, great. These highlighted spaces, I'm going to now infuse a project. It's going to be hour one of 15, two of 15, one of 65, two of 60. And I work it all the way through over four weeks. And what happens is now I have it blocked out and I'm a very protective of that four weeks. There are very few people I let enter into that space of when I've got planned out. If you go to my calendar now, like you can't book me for like four weeks because it's blocked out. I won't let you come in because I got to keep this vision. I got to say yes to what I've already said yes to. Because if I say yes to your new thing, I'm saying no to what I already said yes to. Right. So I keep this big boundary. But now what happens is here's the beautiful part, people. When I get to the point of now I'm working in my day, I'm breathing through the day. I call it. I'm breathing, not breezing. I'm breathing. I'm able to keep my breath. I stay under control and I move. And here's the key piece. When I'm working on project A, let's say I'm working on the book. If I'm working on the book right now, because I know when the book's going to get done for the most part, I know when every other project is going to get done. I'm not on the book thinking about the app, thinking about the coaching program, thinking about the kid. I'm not thinking about anything else. So I can stay hyper-focused and man, I get way more done in less time because I can be focused because I have presence and I have a confidence in knowing everything is where it's supposed to be. Even better, when I shut it down at three o'clock, I can be with my family. My coach in college said, be where you are, when you are. I'm not in the house thinking about work. I'm with the family because I know that's all set to take care of itself. It's going to be done as long as I show up to my time and I use my little egg timer that I have here that lets me make sure I'm, I'm all dialed in, right? I sit here. I don't move until that thing goes off. When I'm dialed in, I'm dialed. And now I get things done. And all of a sudden, we're rocking and rolling. So I hope that helps you guys get a perspective of like at least how my brain works. I have a lot I want to get done. But some of it's going to start in six months. Some will start in a year. I don't got to do it all right now. But here's a cool thing, like folding laundry. When one thing gets done, it creates space for the next thing. And all of a sudden, it's folded and smooth. Cool. Brilliant. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very welcome. Very welcome. Andrew Schubauer, how are you doing? You're out there getting a run in the woods, my man. That's right. <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you? 
I'm doing very well, man. I wish I was out <laughs> hanging with you right now. I'm, I'm, my allergies might pick up, but so far I'm good. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so my question to you is actually, I love your resilience. Um, I think it's so important, you know, being strong is great, but being resilient is way better. But my question is, when you're going through your process, being resilient, showing up consistently, yeah. what do you have to say to people when, in relation to authenticity, like what happened if you were doing your 90, 90 second uh, videos and you got to like 200, day 200, and you just felt like this isn't right for me. And you went through the work. It's not fear. It's not, you know, anything like that. It's not any specific barrier or unhealthy barrier. But you just find out maybe this isn't right for me. Like at so, what point do you make yeah. that decision? So the, I think there's to two things. maybe change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's two things I look at here. Whenever I find that I question if it's right for me, I, I then immediately go, well, why was I doing it in the first place? Because right and wrong is relative to the place I'm going is the first thing you got to think about. I don't think people think about it. They just do something and they, they <laughs> grab habits and do things because so-and-so said I should and I, I saw somebody else. So you'll notice when I told you about the videos, I wanted to be able to speak in fluid thought with ums and ahs not being an issue. So whether or not somebody watched did not determine whether it was good or bad. Now, if I'd started that with the, the, the goal of having a bunch of views, it would have maybe looked like it was bad. You see what I'm saying? So you got to anchor and say, what is the reason I am starting this in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. Then what you said, which was good, is if I'm getting to that point of like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore, I would ask myself in the moments, like, is that my, my moment uh, of, of feeling this? Is this because it's hard or because genuinely I'm not connected to the heart of it anymore? And that's a personal thing because there are things that I'll realize it's just hard, but I'm, I want to do it. But then there's things I realize, like, you know what? I'm not connected to it. For example, there is, I don't do nightly nineties anymore. I did 1,333 straight days. Three, three, three is a specific special number to my life. But here's what I realized. It wasn't as hard anymore. It was still difficult and, you know, I was still doing it, but it didn't speak to my heart anymore. I'd kind of got what I wanted out of it. And my heart wasn't like, I wasn't lit up doing it. I didn't, I didn't enjoy what was going on in the background, whatever it was. It wasn't bad. It wasn't hurting anybody's life. And some people were sad that I stopped doing them to be quite honest, but it didn't speak to my heart. And so at that moment, I was like, you know what? If it's not talking to my heart anymore, I'm not going to keep doing it because what it does, it builds resentment for what I'm doing and it builds a little bit of a pain to do it. And now I'm not, I'm not having the energy I want inside to serve how I want. So first thing is figure out if it's going the place you want and then that's what determines right or wrong. And then two, check the heart or if it's hard. Cool. Thank you so much. I knew there was a reason I wanted to ask you that question. Hey man, <laughs> awesome. I'll see, hey, now you know, I got a little answer. There you go. The first person that put their hand up was Carol Frolic Hole. This is spot on for me. Um, I have, I'm like a monkey and you see the shiny object. Yeah. And um, I've always worked from home for over almost 30 years. So this is not new for me. Um, I start out really well and I'm getting much better at turning off the outside distractions with an autoresponder. Sometimes it's just me hitting my phone I yeah. have already in there, can't talk now and whatever. But um, there are times when I kind of crave the distraction mm -hmm. and um, I tend to lean in that, like I'm focused, but then I'm exhausted. And then I like, I like hungry for that phone call to come in because I am a people person. And, and then I have two, one major, and I don't want to call her a distraction because she's the love of my life. I'm the full-time caretaker uh, companion for my 94-year-old, very active, healthy, still driving, living independently mother who lives about two miles from me. However, she is on technology, and she's always having a problem with her computer or with the phone. Yeah, yeah. And I'm the one she calls, and I'm getting much better at if it's not an emergency – can we do this at another time? However, because she is my mother or when it's my adult children, you know, those people I do, it's hard for me to turn off from them right at that time. Do you have any suggestions around 100%. that? I do. I have a wife and she sounds like your mother. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of those individual things and this is great. Uh, so a couple of things that I found, there are times my wife isn't awake. 
and I am. My wife is a night owl. She will stay up till one, two in the morning. She doesn't like to get up until like nine or 10. I'm up at five, 5.30 every day. I get a good solid three, four hours to work on the things I got to work on. However, when she gets up, I actually like spending time with her in the morning. I'm in a good mood. She's in a good mood. And so I, I get to spend time, like literally we take the kids to school. They get up at seven. I do some work till they're ready to go. 7.50, I get out of the house. I'm back by about 8.15. We hang out for between 30 to 45 minutes. Then I get into my day. And, and I rock and roll, but I've also already got stuff done well before that. So in that window of time, oh, go ahead. You got your thing. Um, mine is different. My mother doesn't live with me. And oh, her time, separate. no, she lives about two miles from me. And okay. she, her time is not my time, her schedule of getting yeah. up. You know, she's having Perfect. breakfast when we're having lunch. And so yeah. it's, it can be very erratic. And yeah. I have gotten much better at not, reacting to her reaction to something. And I first thing I've learned to say is, is it urgent? And she knows I'm building my kingdom now. Yes. So uh -huh. she respects that she's my biggest right. hero. So yes. I don't have that availability, but what I'm hearing from you is for me to be able to say, mom, this is a block of time that I am free. If you're free, let's That's a good have way. that conversation. That's definitely and a good way to do it, yeah. And the thing is on top of that, even so it's like if she, if you're, you know, say her lunchtime is that time, you actually do have that window. And because she's not there, you, you kind of could probably give you an idea somewhat of when she might be awake. So you work at home knowing the phone call probably isn't going to come in during this time frame. It could be five in the morning. You may have to adjust to build, right? Make that small sacrifice. And it may mean you have to get up a little bit earlier, adjust the clock. But if you know, like, hey, mom's not calling usually until like 11 o'clock, all right, I'm going to get up and get really good focus work done in this window. Now, my brain's like yours. I do have windows built in of like buffer and breathe work. I got to get up and walk around because if I don't, then my brain, it actually, it's more taxing to try and think about having to think, right? So yeah. I want to get up, go around, walk outside, go do stuff. And shoot. I'll literally go in the backyard and shoot hoops by myself. I'll just do things because my brain's off. Come back, I'm dialed in again, right? But you do it first. I think you should find that time when mom's not awake. Work at that time when she is awake. Have some time with her. Give yourself the gift of spending time non-guilt, you know, guilt-free yes. time. And then from there, hang out and say, hey, mom, I'm going to go do some work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to now about two hours. Give me two hours to work. Then and then there's a, part, there's a part two to this. I'm just really quick. And I'm oh, sure we got to do real quick, real quick. Yeah. All right. Technology issues. You're doing it. You're feeling focused. And all of a sudden, yep. the, 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 the computer isn't working right or that software uh, isn't yeah. working right or the yeah. phone isn't working right. And you have a technology glitch. It happens yeah. all the time. That's oh, yeah, yeah. Sucker. Yeah, that, that's no fun. Uh, so what I would do is I would choose the things that are more reliable, right? If you know Zoom works, like the, I wouldn't test a whole bunch of new stuff. And then also uh, you make it to a point where like you choose to do things that like if it's a consistent thing in an area, like not even use digital stuff. Like if it's writing, I'm gonna write on a piece of paper. You, there's actually something called a rocket book. You can write on a piece of paper, take a screenshot, it'll pop in the notes. There, then there's not a matter of having to do much besides just, I gotta take a picture, pop it over, right? It does, it kind of, it happens. Technology isn't always the funnest. But it called? Uh, it's called rocket book. Okay. And then also you can hire someone as a tech person. So if you're like, hey, can I have you as like a off the, you know, when I need you, kind of reach out real quick and have you do some tech stuff, reach out to someone. I have a guy on my team, Andrew, who does that. When things don't want to work and I don't want to fix them, he does because he gets money for it. <laughs> so that's how it works. Thank you. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember and you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.